Hey, hey, everybody. It is Monkey Puzzle, and welcome to episode number six, playing the Minecraft Unabridged Mod Pack on the Primus server. So I hope you watched my last episodes where I built that Enderman spawner in town over there. You can't quite see it from here, but it's, it's over there, and it turned out really well. Everybody's using it to get pearls and stuff, and Aaron helped me. He finished the mana... Uh, regulation, the automation of the mana uh, underneath the tower. So you should definitely go watch his video on how he did that. And that was really cool. So we'll be back there to see that and use that again. But in the meantime, while I was doing that, I wasn't working on anything else. I didn't work on my machines or my resource gathering or any of that stuff. And it also showed me that I really need to upgrade my armor these longfall boots are really cool, but the Enderman can one hit me with this no problem. So that's not very cool at all. <laughs> so yeah, I need to get some more resources. I want to make a digital miner this time, I think. A number of the guys have, but I've actually never used a digital miner before. But before I can do that, I need to get some more resources to do that. This is what I have. I have plenty of Ender Pearls now. That is solved, but this is all the iron I have. I've got six diamonds. You know, not too bad, but not enough to make digital miners and stuff like that. And I'm also going to need to work on power. So I'm going to try to do a lot of stuff this episode. And I'm going to start with going off camera and doing a bit more mining. Hopefully my last little bit of manual mining and then we'll come back and hopefully we'll be able to make some more stuff. But before I go off and do that, I want to just make a couple things with you. And before I forget, one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to put the lava crystal on this and make it auto smelting. I've got quite a bit actually of modifiers on here because when I cut down these huge blocks of trees, that counts as, as mining lots of blocks with this. So I can actually put four modifiers on here. So one of them is going to be a lava crystal, which means I'm going to need to make another lumber axe if I want to just get plain wood again. But that's going to be a great way to get lots of charcoal for fuel. So that's going to be an easy fuel source. And then I won't have to smelt wood to turn it into charcoal. We'll just have automatic charcoal. And if I put some lapis on here as well, then it'll also be luck, fortune. So <laughs> that's going to be cool. So I'm going to go into the nether and do that. I'm going to have to go to the farther nether fortress than the one you first at the portal because all the spawners are gone from there. They got snagged. So, but apparently there's a tunnel. The guys on Sunday went and killed the ender, ender dragon. So that also frees us up to go all over the map now as far as we want with our bases. It's totally opened up. But they made a little tunnel in the nether. 300 blocks to get to the ender portal and apparently it's in a fresh untouched uh, nether fortress so i'm gonna go there get some blaze rods i won't show you that except maybe some clips if it's really interesting but i just wanted to tell you i was going to do that and then also in here let's go ahead and start ender io in a big way or a small way actually so we're going to go ahead with these basic capacitors and then i'm going to use four of those to make these machine chassis right here. And I'm leaving that on purpose. We'll come back to that. And then half of them I'm going to put in here and we're going to make two sag mills. So, and in here we'll put the other two machine chassis and we'll make two alloy smelters. So I'm just making these so that I can double the ores here myself and not have to keep running back to the smeltery in town. So one set of these will be hooked Oop, hooked together like that, you know, just sag milling and smelting automatically so that, you know, and I'll just have everything go out a chest. And the other ones of these I'll put in here for, this will be maybe just sag milling and just smelting, something like that. I'll get it all hooked up. Eventually I'm going to make this all mechanism here. And we'll use it for our mechanism stuff. I'll probably make some mecha mechanism machines off camera because we already made a few of those because we'll need them for making the digital miner and getting ready for that. But this will just help me double my ores here. And then another thing I wanted to do 
is over here, I wanted to take another step in immersive engineering with a Coke oven. You saw me start the hemp farm way back there. We're actually going to move that pretty soon. But I wanted to make that. And then in here, if we switch these around and rotate them like that and then put this in there. Whoa, what was that? Module base. I have no idea what that is. Okay. But this is a tank valve from Fancy Fluid Storage. So I just made a little doorway in here. I was going to put the Coke oven like in the floor or something, but that side that's ugly. I don't want to mess up my nice floor. So in here, I just carved out a little alcove. And then right here, we're going to make the Coke oven from Immersive Engineering. So it's just like the Railcraft Coke oven pretty much, except you don't leave the hole in the middle. It's just a three by three by three. And, oh, I probably need the hammer from Immersive Engineering, don't I? So how do you make that? So let's look that up. I think it's just a hammer. How many hammers do we got? That, not that one. This one. So we're going to, I wonder, nope, I don't have any of that stuff. So let's take that back out. Like that. Okay, so I think we just need to whack it with that in order to make it a... Um, actual coke oven and then while i was here let's go back to that uh, composite or the binder stuff this stuff i needed to make that stuff so we'll make 40 of those and then i'm going to start that cooking over here we'll need that in a second and then let me see i bet i just like right click it yeah there we go so yeah that's where you throw your stuff in so what this is just like the Railcraft one, you throw coal in here and it's going to turn it into coal coke and also make creosote. So this is going to fill up with creosote pretty quick. So in order to have a place for that creosote to go, I thought we would start fancy fluid storage. So this is one of those things kind of like Zycraft was where you can make a tank uh, without all all the uh, fancy effects, I think, you can make a tank out of any kind of blocks you want. So the frame has to be all the same block. So in this case, I just used what was here already, the stone. And I went down and I made sure that these are continuous all the way. This hopefully, I pulled that off right. And then I think if we just put this in here, and then is there something we're supposed to do, like right click it? Yep, so that means that it worked. So now this is actually a tank. And I think the blocks, each block of space in there holds more than 16 per, like most tanks do, of, of buckets. Uh, I'm not sure, we'll find out in a second. To find that out, I think we're gonna need, oh, actually not quite clear glass. We're gonna actually need to cook some nether quartz and i think we're going to need to do it in here so let's go ahead and put those in there yeah and we're going to get the whatchamacallit the fused quartz so and that's going to go between some conduit binder i believe actually let's let the rest of that keep cooking and i'm going to need a bit more fused quartz I have gone into the nether a bit, as you can see, so I don't have nothing from the nether, but I do not have blaze rods yet, so that's what I'm going to work on in a second. One more piece of this, and we're going to be able to make our first fluid conduit, or hopefully this is going to be a high-pressure fluid conduit. So we take the fused quartz and go like that, and there we go. And now let's, we're going to see if this works. If I put this here, oops, bam, and go ahead and grab my little wrenchy wrench right here. So we make this, and this is going to be an extract, auto extract. Yep, there we go. We are starting to get creosote in here already. I'm just going to make that in only for now. So yeah, we're making coal coke. We've got our first piece of it here. We're making creosote and we've got creosote storage. So I'm just gonna keep that going as I get coal. And not only is it increasing the value of our coal, 
um, by making it cold coke, making it uh, burn more for nothing. But it's also giving us this creosote, which is going to be an essential ingredient when we start making stuff in immersive engineering. So just wanted to start that on camera. Wanted to make these with you guys. And so, yeah, I'm going to go run around. I'm going to go do a last bit of manual mining, and I'm going to go get some blaze rods. And then I will be back to make the lava crystal for, not for that, but for that. <laughs> okay, so I'll see you guys in a bit, and then we will do some more stuff. <laughs> Casual Kiwi was nice enough to show me where there was a blaze spawner very close to the portal. <laughs> I've got my death marker to mark it for me, and I stuck around till I had my goal of 32 blaze rods. So that's cool. Very cool. And then there's uh, one other thing I want to do while I'm in the nether. Well, I want to find some nether shiny ore. Uh, that's going to be very useful. But I also want to set my portal over here so I can just get here from my house. So I'm going to find where that is here. I need to go to 185 actually, which is this way. No. Yeah, negative 185, which is this way and negative 86. So that's just right here actually, very close. So it seems a little too close, but maybe that one's just not set exactly right. So I'm going to go ahead and build this one here. And then when I, when I start one from my place, this, it should link up to here. We'll see. All right. I'll see you guys back. Another thing I want to show you real quick is someone has gone ahead and built a wither skeleton farm here in the nether right by the portal. And I think when the lever is off is when it works. And... Wither skeletons and sometimes just plain old skeletons drop down. Yep, there it is. And I've already got three wither skeleton heads right now. So I'm going to be able to make a wither very soon. There's another one. Awesome. Okay, well, it's actually a couple nights later. <laughs> I spent the last couple evenings mining. So I put in my time with the manual mining. Primarily in the nether, actually, was the most lucrative. You can have some really good hauls down there. So, yeah, and, and the nether rack is a lot easier to break than stone is. So now we're looking much better. That's what this looks like now. You can see it's moved all the way up to a diamond chest. And we've got this up here too, so we're in much better shape to really get going and start teching up. One of the things I just want to talk to you about real quick is this thing. This is a dev null. And some of you may know what this is. 
Uh, and I kind of knew what it was, but I never really used it before. There, I'm going to be there. This is basically a thing. It's very easy to make. You can make it in here. It's from open blocks, and you can hardly see it, but that is it. See, there it is. And then if I, if I shift, click on this in the air, you get this little one inventory slot for it. And whatever you put in there, it will collect up to 64 of, but then from there, it will, it will uh, delete any, anything else. So when you're doing something like mining in the nether, where you just collect tons and tons of netherrack you'll never use, it's really handy. So I just set up an example over here. You can see I have 62 in, in the dev null. And now if I go pick all this up, I've got 64 and none other. So this is just great for not overloading. And you can carry as many of these as you want, set them to things. So if you're in the overworld and you want to do it for like cobble, gravel, and andesite, for example, you can. So that was really handy. And what else is new? Oh, I, I put a chunk loader in here so that my ores could process and my creosote could get um, made as well. You can see this thing has filled up quite a bit and you can see actually it can hold uh, 2,800 buckets and I have 772. So that's pretty cool. We'll get to that in another episode. And also, oh yeah, let's get this made the lava crystal. So I got to make some fire charges. We've got all the stuff we need at this point. So that, let's go back over here. And then the fire charges go around the lava bucket with the blaze rods. And now we've got a lava crystal. So we can go ahead and put that on the lumber axe. It has to be fully repaired before you can do any of this. I've got five modifiers on there. So this will only take one. So that's cool. And actually, maybe I have to do it in here. And I have, I've been working on my hammer in the meantime. It's actually fully fortune and fully looting. And I've got a cobalt head on it and manulin plates. And I'm going to change the handle out pretty soon too. But in here, oh yeah, I was set up to put beheading on my, my cleaver. But I found out that only added 10%. Right now it's 20. It would have made it 30 Instead, I started lapis on it and put quartz on it. So, yeah, I was able to get the overkill achievement from that. But anyway, I'm talking too much. Let's see. Let's put this in there and that in there. Now, there we go. Now, this is auto smelt. And it actually would probably be a good idea also to put uh, fortune on it as well. Let's go ahead and do that. Because then not only will we get charcoal when we chop down wood, but these always mess up. Maybe that's just me <laughs> being clumsy. But we'll also get extra charcoal from the fortune. It actually works out that way. So that's pretty cool. So we're not going to have enough lapis to take it all the way up. But this will get it started. And something also I've learned from the guys about Tinker's Tools is that once you start an ability on them, when you use them, it keeps going up. Like, so that's why I started this one with Lapis, and it has been working its way up. A lot of what I have on here was was added by using it. So let's go check this out real quick. I'm going to sleep real quick, just so I don't get mobbed by mobs. Okay, and I got to... One of these episodes, we're going to use the door factory and make a much better door. I've got these two tree pads right here, which I'm actually going to eliminate in favor of a potato farm and a hemp farm, but we'll get to that. <laughs> this is my tree right now. <laughs> so let's just attack this at one spot here. Wham! A little moment of lag. And then look at all that. It just drops charcoal. So as far as the fuel source goes... That is incredible, because I don't have to use any energy to turn the wood into charcoal, and we're getting some looting on that too, or, excuse me, fortune. So, yeah, that's where all the charcoal is coming from now, from, for now, and then I'll just have to start with, like, an iron lumba lumber axe or something um, when I want just wood. Anyway, 
I want to show you how much I got, but I got to clean all this up first. And they keep <laughs> making trees. <laughs> Here, let me just run around for a bit. Oh, I'm full. Anyway, you get the point. Lots. <laughs> so let me clean this up and then we'll go do a few more things before we run out of time. So to wrap this video up, I want to finish setting up my machine room. And this is going to be mechanism. This is going to be Ender IO. And this is going to be thermal expansion. And we'll be able to stand here in the middle and mess around with all the machines. And then eventually this will be the ME network, the AEME over here. I always find that the ladder column is a great place to also get your ME cables through your whole base. So that's the goal. And to start with, before I move these machines, I want to use them to make some of the alloys I'm going to need. Ooh, I got some steel in there. So the first is the uh, energetic alloy or energized alloy, something like that. And we're going to make that. So these, I had to get that out of the nether, but now we got plenty of it. And then over here, let's get some pulsating iron going. This is going to be for the item conduits. It won't let me put two in there. Oh, well. And then this is going to be used for several things. It's the first tier of the, well, it's actually the second tier of the energy conduits. But since we have plenty of ender pearls, we're just going to take it on up to here because this stuff is just the energetic alloy plus the ender pearl. So we'll change half of that over uh, right away. And so we'll have three of the alloys right off for Ender IO, and then I'll be able to run conduits through the floor uh, in order to bring the energy from this whole system over here. And now that I have this charcoal, <laughs> I can go ahead and load these up. I also gonna need the alloys in order to upgrade these. I'm gonna get up to octatic uh, capacitors with those so that all these machines are as efficient as they can be. The mechanism ones are also going to need speed and energy upgrades. And then we'll look at the augmentations for the thermal expansion ones. So I'm going to let those cook. I'm going to start moving things around and then I will bring you back. And then we're also going to need to pulverize some sand in order to get silicon and also pulverize some coal. But we're going to need that in order to make electrical steel. So with that stuff made, I can go ahead and grab my crescent hammer and start taking this stuff apart. And then I will join you back when we're ready to put it back together. And these are all charged up too, so I might as well take these off. All right, I think I'm ready to go. Let's see how I do. So let's start by putting down the machines we already made. So over here, I decided to put Ender IO over here because I only have one level of it. I want to block the view from the door as little as possible. So under here, um, I've got a whole line of the energy conduit and the item conduit. And so the energy conduit whoop, does, it doesn't like me to jump up there. The energy conduit does the same thing that the universal cable did before, basically taking the power from the batteries, these ones here that are all coming from the 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 heat generators the mechanism heat generators the four of them buried back there and then these four sterling generators as well and i could put four more of those and then power system is going to get upgraded but that's coming up we have so much to do so and behind each bank of machines not only is the energy conduit now this one for some reason keeps disappearing but if you kind of do that as a little block update it comes back, so just let's remember that it's there. <laughs> anyway, where each bank of machine goes, I've already stuck item conduit as well, because I think I'm going to need it. So over here, we're going to do the sag mill, 
Why did you do that? Sag mill and alloy smelter. And then this disappeared somewhere. There it is. Sag mill and alloy smelter. That's ugly. So I got to fix that. Okay. So that, and then one more machine that I use from Ender IO all the time is the painting machine. It's one diamond. That's okay though. Cause I don't know if you noticed before, but we have plenty of diamond now, thanks to the nether mostly. And so that goes there. So this is going to be good for doing painted glowstone and stuff. Like if we take some of the glowstone here and we go like that and make it back into glowstone, this unity texture pack messes up with the glowstone. <laughs> but anyway, so that would go in there and we'd paint it as stone bricks or whatever else we're doing. And then I can get rid of all these ugly torches. It's also going to be good for painting the facade to cover this up. And we'll do that real quick too, since I'm talking about it. The facade, I think is made like that. Yeah. And then we would do the same thing with painting it like we're doing the glowstone. So get those. Oh, that was one more glowstone. Okay. We'll get those and we'll be able to cover this all up like that. So you won't see this whole connection. So there's that. And then as far as the mechanism machines go, we'll definitely need the crusher. And then I'm going to make two enrichment chambers because I find them super useful for it's in there. There it is for redstone and lapis. What happened to you? Are you in here um, for getting the most per? I think you get like 16 per if you put if you silk touch the ore and you put them through the enrichment chambers. I also want a osmium compressor and osmium compressor because that's going to be necessary whenever we need to make uh, refined redstone ingots, uh, for example. And then finally, I want the precision sawmill, because not only do you get six planks for your wood with this, but that gives you the sawdust that you need to make the boxes, the cardboard boxes that can move chests and can move spawners and all kinds of things, machines with their contents. So that's cool. So we've got the Ender IO. We got the mechanism and then over here <laughs> we've got thermal expansion so to start with there's at least 10 thermal expansion machines that i want to make and oh yeah i needed some more glass so let me grab that hopefully that's enough and then let's just take that and stop it oh my god look at that <laughs> are you done all right, let me fix that. I'll be right back. All right, I think it stopped. <laughs> and so we'll just put those in there. And so we're going to just make a couple extra. We'll have the basic machine frames. And I don't know if it does any good, but I'm going to upgrade these to hardened because that's easy right now. You could take it all the way up to resonant, but that's more than I want to do at our level right now. So the first one over here is the basic the pulverizers there's things they can do sometimes better or with you know better results than the uh sag mills so and then next over here of course would be your basic redstone furnaces so we're going to make a couple of those and then over here let's grab these again i want the fluid transposer and of course with a fluid transposer you usually need a magma crucible and then over here, we're going to get the induction smelter. And then oop, we're going to make a glacial precipitator. And two more. The igneous extruder. And then over here, we've got the energetic infuser. So that's quite a bit of this stuff. But I think it's going to be worth it. These guys actually, they're going to be two levels high. So we'll actually need to bring the power up a bit as well. So let's just take it up the back like that. It's going to be a little ugly, but uh, we'll use facades or whatever we need 
to make it nicer. Oh, that's just perfect. We made just enough. So I'll probably play with how I have this. I think I'm going to go like I did with the Ender IO, the pulverizer, redstone furnace, pulverizer, redstone furnace. I may change my mind about that, but that will give me the ability to either pulverize things and then smelt them or just pulverize and go. These will be replaced with chests or whatever as we go along. And then let me see, we've got the fluid transposer and the magma crucible. So the fluid transposer definitely should go there. And then the magma crucible makes a lot of sense on top of it if we're making like energized redstone and then putting it into redstone uh, cable conduit flux duct whatever it's called and then we've got the rest of these so the induction smelter and let's see igneous extruder energetic infuser and glacial precipitator so I'm not sure exactly the best order for these. Let's just go ahead and put the ener energetic confuser here for charging stuff up. Stop <laughs> moving around. I got to turn off inventory tweaks auto refill. And I'll put the induction smelter. Oh, I guess it'll go right there. And then we'll just do igneous extruder. Oop. Igneous extruder. And... <laughs> glacial precipitator so that's cool every one of these is all charged up now um, so we've got a full bank of the three main kinds of machines that I'm going to be using so whatever we need we can turn to it I'll spend a little time tweaking the order of them and making sure that the inputs and outputs all make sense but I'm pretty enabled with that so in the break, I'm going to get the stuff together to make a few more things that we will start with. We're going to get some automatic mining going on next time. I don't mind hand mining, but there's so many other things I want to get to do. I spent the last couple nights doing mining by hand, and that was fun, but didn't do a bunch of other stuff while I was doing it. So we're still looking pretty good here. Got a good amount of stuff left, and yeah, we're going to put that to use coming up in the next episodes i've got a long list of stuff i want to do so anyway this is monkey puzzle teching up with you guys and i hope you join me next time please make sure to check out all the guys in the list down in the description because we are all playing together and they're all doing very amazing stuff a bunch of very talented guys so definitely go check them out and if you like what i do i usually don't ask but it really helps me to know if people like what's going on. Please press like and let me know you like it. And any comments you have, please, please, please put them down there. I love getting an input. I love getting the feedback. Anyway, this is Monkey Puzzle. And I'm going to sign out and get ready for the next episode. Bye-bye.